Hi, everybody. My name is Shuja, and welcome to Park Case, where we talk to people who have expertise in the transportation industry and in the parking industry, particularly in the East Coast and the Boston City area. Today, I'm really excited to have with me a personality who has done who has such immense expertise in the transportation industry. He is the man behind uh, the transportation radio, which is a which is where he does interviews on a variety of transportation topics. He's also the editor of the transportation communications newsletter, which has an immense following. Apart from that, uh, a lot of people don't know about this, but apart from that, he has a, been the voice behind various transportation facilities, including AirTrain Newark, AirTrain JFK, New York City Subway, and the Highway Advisory Radio System in New York Liberty International Airport and John F. Kennedy Airport. So the man I'm talking to today is Mr. Bernie Wagon Blast. Sir, great to have you on the show with us. Sujit, great to be with you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, pleasure all mine. Sir, so how are you doing right now? What are you in the state of mind right now? Well, it's uh, summertime here in New Jersey. Uh, thankfully, in this part of the country, at least in New Jersey, for a change, we are on the downside as far as COVID-19 goes. So, Things are getting a little bit easier to move around as opposed to other parts of the country where the rate of infection has been increasing. So uh, we are thankful for that, at least. That's perfect. That's that's good to know. At least there's some happiness. There's some good energy in the country. And I'm, I'm happy that you're, you're taking the share of it right now. So one of the things that we were interested in and in is how when what fascinated you about transportation? About the transportation industry and how did you actually get started into this business how did, how did it all happen well transportation originally was not what i was interested in doing my main interest was working in radio and right. one of my first jobs after graduating college way back in 1979 was being hired as one of the original voices and reporters for this company that came to new york called shadow traffic and what shadow traffic was was a traffic reporting service that was on the air on a variety of different radio stations in the New York City area. And for five years or so, I was one of those folks who would tell you every morning what traffic backups were like at the Brooklyn Bridge, at the Lincoln Tunnel, and on the BQE. So that was my introduction, if you will, to the world of transportation. As I said, originally, I figured I would be working in radio. But with that introduction, I then ended up having a career in the transportation field, right. even though I had absolutely no training or education working in transportation other than what what i learned on my own so to speak right and is there any particular thing that sort of gravitates you towards transportation is is there something that always kept you hooked kept you interested was there anything like that within that space i think what was always interesting to me is people may not think of it necessarily uh, right away, but there's a lot of similarities between communications and transportation. One is the sharing or the movement of, of information. The other one is the movement of goods or people. And I think I kind of caught the, the connection between the two, but to me, it's all modes of transportation. What I've done with both transportation radio and with my transportation communications newsletter is really look at all modes because I think some of the things that you learn in one mode can have a, a opportunity in other modes as well. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's really fine. And that, that really wants me to ask you, it's like, how did you actually start transportation radio? You have such a big following. You, you've been at it for a while. I, I believe it's, you've been at it since the 90s, I believe, uh, working on, on the transportation radio. Why did you made, uh, how did you start it in? And what, what is the one thing that really you said, I'm going to do it like this, or this is how I'm going to you know, take it forward. Well, it was first the Transportation Communications newsletter that I started back in 1998. And that was, for those who uh, may have been around at the time, was sort of just the beginning days of the internet. And I had always thought, wouldn't it have been really cool to have been involved with television or radio back when they were starting back in the 1920s or the 1950s? Well, in 1990s, it was the internet. That was a new medium. And this was my opportunity to be a part of it. So first right. I created the newsletter. And then probably around 2014 was when I created Transportation Radio. Again, the idea being, hey, why not use some of my broadcasting skills in this new medium of podcasting? And 
try to combine uh, both my my knowledge and love of of communications and transportation uh, doing uh, interviews audio interviews and that's been working out perfectly for you i think that's that's been a great a great innovation i think it's a great expert a great place to go and get all that sort of information currently you know you know we're going through a great outbreak which is on everybody's mind but even before that, where did you see where the parking industry was like? Where was where was the state of the parking industry, particularly in the East Coast and you know around those areas? I think with the parking industry, particularly when I think of New York City, you think of, of parking as something that is in very limited supply, but high demand. So therefore it is something that is very high cost. Obviously, the value of land in and around New York City is quite high, and that's also true up in the Boston area or Washington, D.C. So the need to find alternatives to maybe the traditional parking models that we've had for so many years is something that I think was becoming more and more evident. And obviously, technology was something that was presenting more of an opportunity to present itself as a means to address some of those issues. But then you also started seeing things uh, that came along because of technology like Uber and Lyft. And how did those affect the parking industry now that we have COVID-19 and people are going to be perhaps hesitant about taking not only uh, shared ride vehicles, but even uh, mass transit? What's that going to mean for, for parking? I, I don't think anyone necessarily knows just yet. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that was one of the questions even I had was like, where do you see Uber and Lyft uh, going from here? Because it's such a, a, a challenging times for all companies like this, where you need a lot of close contact with people. And how do you maintain health standards accordingly? But now that you have, we have COVID-19, uh, now that we are in a state where there is such, you know, particularly in Boston, the, there's very few people are using the Boston train, the green line, the red line. I'm sure there's a lot of the same case in uh, New York too in the subway. Uh, where do you see, what's where do you see the parking industry? The parking is, uh, uh, lots are empty right now. There are not that a lot of cars are parking, especially in the Boston area. Where do you see the uh, where do you see the parking industry now during the COVID nineteen outbreak? Well, I think it's certainly going to be underused in terms of what's available versus the demand for it. I think a lot of people, because they have been working from home for so many months, are going to find that they probably are going to, at least on a limited basis, want to continue working remotely. And that's going to lessen the demand for traffic or for parking, I should say. But I think there's also going to be, again, opportunities for people to be entrepreneurs and to be inventive and come up with new ways of trying to serve people and and particularly those who who use parking exactly uh where do you where do you see is the biggest opportunity right now like with the COVID 19 going on is there something that people should be looking more towards that like hey this is this is an opportunity this there might be a great tragedy there might be a great problem but then it lies a solution and an opportunity. Is there any a particular place where you see there's an opportunity right now, particularly in the parking industry? I think for the parking industry, one of the things that they have to do is find a way to reassure the public that it is safe to use the parking facilities. I think that's one of the biggest challenges. So how can you do that? I don't necessarily have an answer for that, but what can you do to demonstrate that parking is safe and show that uh, in a demonstrable way to folks that they can go back to a parking garage. That may mean some different things, again, whether people are going to be using parking more remotely and having uh, other means to get from the parking facility to their office, or would they be using for perhaps facilities that are, are remote and having to find new parking opportunities uh, in those kinds of locations? Exactly. Uh, and I think uh, going off to what you said, I think we here at Parkes uh, are trying to, you know, add value to that equation, as you mentioned, that people will be looking for remote parking and other resources to, you know, help with their parking. And here at Parkes, what we're doing is trying to actually economically empower people with technology to monetize their parking while providing a cheaper and safer and secure option. So how do you think something like Parkes can add value to today's current parking climate and parking situation, particularly in a city like 
New York or Boston, where there's not a lot of parking options, and now we have this service. Do you think that how can we add value to this to this problem? Well, I think one way that Parte can contribute to making a difference is continuing what you've already been doing in terms of identifying underused or not used locations where people are able to park their vehicle. And I think there are going to be new places that will become available that perhaps haven't been available in the past because of the disruptions that COVID-19 is causing. So I think that's one of the ways that a company like yours is going to be able to, to make a difference, to identify, again, new opportunities and using technology to better take advantage and manage those kinds of opportunities. It's not the big parking garage necessarily that is going to be the way forward in the future, but it may be some of the, uh, the more localized, uh, smaller facilities that people have overlooked in the past. Exactly. And I think that that goes to, you know, that's what we're trying to do here because we're trying to, you know, give, there are options out there. There is enough space. It's just that people need to be able to use that space, monetize it and make it, you know, uh, and contribute to the, the community, you know, and being at the same time very sustainable and being green with what we're trying to do here. Uh, where do you see now is the new biggest innovation in parking right now? I think previously we talked about I think we had a previous conversation where we talked about electric cars and how that's going to change, how that's going to be a differentiating factor in the coming years in terms of parking spaces, in terms of services regarding parking spaces. Is that something do you think is going to be uh, a new thing that we, we, sh we should be looking forward to now? I think that's definitely, definitely it's going to become more prominent. Again, it's not just a space to put the vehicle, but for people and more and more people turning to whether it's all electric vehicles or electric hybrid vehicles where they only have to be plugged in for uh, part of their, their power. I think that's going to make something much more attractive and something that people can obviously charge a premium for if they have something like that that's available more than just a space but something that's an added service. And I think, again, maybe you're going to see some of the other things that we've we've seen in the past where they're using technology that packages, uh, deliveries can be put in the vehicle while it's parked. So, again, being able to know where those vehicles are and be able to better manage the location of those vehicles through technology, whether it's GPS or apps, those are all ways and means that I think it's going to change in the future. Great. I mean, that, that is such a great insight. And I think that we, we definitely are looking forward to, you know, uh, look into those kind of spaces, look into, you know, what, what can we contribute to that, you know, conversation. Uh, what, where, where, what do we can see Bernie Wagenblatt doing right now? Like, where do you, where, what's your next big project? What are you doing right now? That's, that's keeping you busy or what are you foreseeing? I think for the time being, I, I'm pretty much got my hands full with the, the newsletters. I do about seven different transportation related newsletters uh, for both myself and for different clients. Uh, the uh, podcasting that I do uh, ha has grown so that I, I am doing podcasts now for the Institute of Transportation Engineers, as well as the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. I think that there's there are so many opportunities there with with podcasting that I would still like to explore because as people again their lives change the opportunity to deliver information to them through their headphones is a, a new uh, opportunity to to reach people uh, and give them information that they might not have otherwise had available. So where where can we find all of this information? If we would really appreciate if you can share some of your links with us, and we can our followers would love to go and check out what your content is doing. Sure, well, I guess one of the best places to go if you want to find out about at least my my podcasts would be transportationradio.com. I have all of the podcasts posted there, and there are uh, several episodes that are specifically focused on parking. And if someone is interested in looking at my transportation communications newsletter being added to the distribution list. It's free. It comes out Monday through Friday. They can simply drop me an email at Bernie at transportationradio.com. Perfect. That is incredible. I think this is a great resource for anybody who is interested in the parking and tra transportation industry and know better than you to have that sort of information to follow you. 
Uh, thank you so much, sir, for giving your time and you know sharing your insight on how you started and where you see the parking industry. Uh, and definitely, people would be following you. Uh, for us, you can follow us at our at VR Parkes. Uh, you can go to our Instagram, social media. You can go to www.parkes.com to follow us on our website and follow our blog. Where we'll be posting this interview along with on our social media at Instagram, where, as I mentioned, at VR Parkes. Thank you so much, sir, for taking out your time. I hope you have a great day, and we'll definitely be staying in touch with you and hopefully have more of you in our show and bring you on board. Thank you so much, Susan, for inviting me. In. Pleasure to be a part of your program. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye bye now.